Well, staying in that space, more than 50 companies, including some defense, pharmaceutical and tech firms, are visiting Vietnam to discuss investment and sales opportunities as part of a business mission organized by the U.S. ASEAN Business Council. Now, notably, this is the first time in nearly a decade that aerospace firms are in attendance. The business mission could be a major driver for space companies otherwise restricted from doing business in certain countries. Joining us now to discuss is Procure AM co-founder and CEO Andrew Channon. Andrew, good to have you on the show. So obviously, after a, with this being a decade since they've had this sort of meeting here, what is at stake here in terms of the timing and also the goal of this meeting? You know, right now we're seeing countries scrambling to shore up allies around the world. And the U.S. can't just sit by and allow allies or would-be allies to, to cozy up with potential adversarial nations. And Vietnam is one that the U.S. has enjoyed a, a very long positive relationship with um, over the years. But that said, Vietnam is one of their strongest military partners um, as far as military equipment supplies over the years has been Russia. A uh, country that's you know, certainly been in uh, our spotlight for more than the last year, but you know, very heavily recently. Um, although it doesn't seem like anything will get done immediately because there are so many concerns when doing various trade deals, dealing with uh, important security, technology, or military capabilities. But this is a big step forward for the U.S. showing that they want to open their arms to Vietnam even more. And obviously, I mean, you have some of the big players, Boeing, Lockheed Martin, stepping in for supplies on things such as helicopters. But I also want to talk about the space race, because you have SpaceX also going to be in attendance there. What sort of, could this be some sort of pad, a pivotal moment or really a setting of the scene for what might happen with the new space race? We've already seen the space race developing before our eyes, and it happened well before the Ukrainian invasion um, and is ramping up even more since. And so um, you know, the U.S. takes security and national defense uh, extremely seriously. And as we've seen um, more screening out of countries that U.S. firms are allowed to do business with, we're also realizing that we don't want to live in a world of isolation. And not only can this be beneficial to expand our partnerships, relationships, and who we do business with for military and political uh, purposes, but you know, these can be great boons for this entire space industry. And historically, space has been a very collaborative industry. You just look no further than the International Space Station, where, you know, regardless of what had been happening on Earth for a very long time, we've seen um, you know, great collaboration in space. And so to completely uh, raise walls and shut off communication in this industry uh, would potentially be a long term negative um, you know, for what could this industry become. But this is a, a huge sign of showing that U.S. relationships expanding to so, you know, neighbors of potentially adversarial nations are something that the U.S. is taking very seriously. And I want to ask you about your ETF, ticker UFO. Talk about the holdings you have in there, because it does include Boeing and Lockheed. There. What sort of investments are you seeing? How keen are investors at the moment? So you know, space has been an industry that's been volatile, just like many other um, you know, kind of thematic industries. But it's one that shows you know, major importance and also some some interesting catalysts. So. Um, you know, even private companies that aren't in the fund like SpaceX have done things with reusable rockets that have lowered the cost of access to space, which frees up new clients to come into this industry that maybe it was cost prohibitive before. And as they drive down prices, other rocket companies are coming out and they're creating solutions and driving down prices. So we have launch companies like Rocket Lab. We have companies like Boeing and Lockheed Martin, which have a joint venture called the United Launch Alliance. Um, that's also a major launch provider around the world. Um, there's communications companies, there's satellite manufacturers and operators like Maxar, which uh, most of your audience is probably very familiar with being announced as being a potential takeover target by private equity at some point this year. Um, you know, there are many companies that are generating real revenues in space today. Many people focus on more of the further out exploration ideas or asteroid mining or colonizing of planets, um, but there are many real companies today and UFO gives uh, investors exposure to almost uh, 40 publicly traded from companies from around the world specializing in all different areas of the space economy. And so for those who are interested in investing in this space, I mean, they're looking at some of these geopolitical tensions. You have what's happening with, with Russia and China, you know, forging closer ties here. What does this mean for the space race and how people can position themselves? So I think there's a chance that we might see less collaboration between potentially adversarial nations because technology is something that is extremely um, critical when trying to separate your capabilities from, from potential opponents. 
Um, that said, we are seeing a huge interest in space spending and contracting from the U.S. government, uh, the DOD and military, as well as foreign nations as well. So if uh, Ukraine and Russia was a wake up call for anything, it was that space is now more critical than it ever has been for uh, for our nation and for the globe. And so I'm still collaborating with allies um, to expand our capabilities will be important. But we are embarking on this new space race 2.0, where it's no longer the USSR versus the USA just saying, hey, look what we can do um, and more of a vanity project. These are now critical national security and defense priorities. We're seeing significant contracting coming out. And um, you know, in many cases, it's, it's to believe that you know, US companies will receive a bulk of those contracts due to national security concerns. So to the extent that the US government wants to continue down its path of um, uh, fending off adversaries by outspending them, you know, space is a domain that they've seen as you know, the strategic high ground. So you know, we're, we're in the camp that believes that the US takes space very seriously. It's, it's not um, you know, one side of the aisle that wants to see us succeed here. Um, and it's something that we're seeing collaboration within the U.S. as well. So we're really encouraged. Um, you know, I think nations are starting to take this as a as an extremely important priority for themselves. You either have to be independent and have your own capabilities, which for many smaller nations is is almost you know, cost prohibitive, or you have to find who your ally is going to be and really make sure that you can continue to build on those relationships so that you have that partner in the future for all your space capabilities as well. And we'll certainly continue to watch this as we figure in things like supply chains and collaborations in those places and what that means for the space race as well. Procure AM co-founder and CEO Andrew Channing, thank you for your time this morning on Yahoo Finance.